how's everybody doing today? <clears throat> so the 139 just finished up. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so any questions that people have right now? I'm going to switch cameras here because there we go. That's a little better camera. <clears throat> Is everybody here in this broadcast okay? Because I'm still technology challenged some days. I can't believe it, but it is true. Okay, well, you know, I had some questions, uh, just a couple this week. Not, not the usual uh, dump that I get, but here we go. Um, on 466, this is from uh, Ann Allison. She wants to know, uh, on 466A and Micro Racetrack Road, an empty barbecue restaurant, that's Burke's Barbecue, and another building was raised. Do you know what it was cleared for? I don't know the, that, uh, I don't know exactly what's going in there. Um, I think it was another grocery store, but I can't say for 100% sure. I don't remember. Sorry, not a great one. Not a great answer, I know. Um, uh, let's see. All right. Okay, so William says, uh, hello from the Village of Florida. Hello, William. Good to hear from you again. Uh, Clark says, yes, he can hear me. Rich B says, yes, he can hear me. And uh, Rich D says, uh, update 139 look great. Well, thank you. Appreciate you watching. Um, this is from J.D. Finelli. I don't know. It's their email address. Anyway, uh, thank, you from, thank you so much for what you do. Very informative. What is your opinion on the villages of Edenfield and Oak Hollow? Also, any information on the new part of the village of Richmond? Thank you again so much. So, uh, Oak Hollow and Edenfield are still quite a ways away uh, from being ready. Um, I showed you in, in the video footage that, um, you know, uh, they're just now getting roadbeds done and it's going to be a while, uh, you know. If if it if anything happens in those by fall, late fall, or even winter, I, I would be surprised. You know, there's just so much el so much else going on. Um, that's Edenfield and Oak Hollow, and then uh, Village of Richmond. Uh, so that's moving along quickly. They uh, they were putting up the walls for um, the, the villa community uh, yesterday and today when I went by. Uh, so uh, it's, it's looking good. Now, uh, you know, what's going to happen and how long it's going to happen, I don't know. Uh, but my guess is, looking at the way they're progressing, I would say this summer those, those houses are going to be up for sale. Uh, they, they do move rather quickly when they want to. All right. Um, let's see. Well, that's the that's the only questions I really got via email. Uh, I had some other ones that came up during the week. Uh, one of them is uh, why are villages residents paying for the revetment project on uh, the island on uh, what's it called uh, <laughs> Morse Boulevard? <laughs> and uh, you know why isn't the county paying for it? Um, well. It's not the county's property, and it's not the bridge. It is the island that has the problem. Uh, there's erosion. Mother Nature is smarter than man. Feature that. So um, the the island is, is eroding away. They could do nothing. They really could. They could get away with not doing anything at all, and everything would be fine. Um, but it's not the county's property. There's nothing wrong with the bridge. There's nothing wrong with the road. Uh, it is a little bit rough, but that's being addressed by the county in the next year or so. Um, but the revetment project is is strictly about the island, and that island is owned by one of the community development districts. I don't remember if it's Sumter Landing or if it's CDD5. It's one of the two. Um, oh, yeah. The, the one that, man, I get hit with this one um, probably three times a day. When will Well Point open and McNeil Drive open and the other villages, Oak Hollow, Edenfield, and things like that? Uh, as I said in 139, 
Uh, it's going to be a while. They're not going to open that until, um, uh, what you call it, they're ready to start selling houses, uh, which isn't going to happen for a while. They're focusing on, uh, right now, Moultrie Creek, Shady Brook, and um, what's the other one? Uh, Lakeview. Let me see. Oh, well, my puppy cam has got <laughs> the tail end of Lily. There she is. Hello, Lily. Hey. There she is. <laughs> That's my sweet girl. Uh, she's she's a big girl. Okay, okay, okay. Here, wait. We got cookies. <laughs> yes, I have cookies on my desk just for my dogs. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, go away. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. I'll, I'll just pet her as as I talk. Um, but yeah. You know, trying to predict the exact date for them to open those areas to open. Uh, my Magic 8 Ball broke a long, long time ago. And, you know, trying to figure out what the developer's going to do and when they're going to do it. Uh, anything short of um, Water's Edge, it, it's just it's too far in advance, too far in the future uh, to, to really guess. So, hey, 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 leave my hand alone. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, let's see. Um, blah, 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 blah. Construction on Rolling Acres. So if you go down Rolling Acres Road, just south of what is it, 466, and just south of the, uh, I think it's the American Legion, yeah, American Legion Post. There's some construction going on there. That's part of that uh, Thousand Oaks or uh, one of the, some development there in Lady Lake. Uh, it's huge, and uh, they just they just acquired some more land that gives them a third access point. Uh, so that's what that is. Uh, it it's going to be a big development. I think it's supposed to be 1,200 homes, if I remember right. So uh, that's going to happen a long time. It, that's going to take a long time to build out. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, what do we got here? This is from Jerry Harris. She says, uh, video 139 was very informative. I'm trying to be patient so we can find the right building lot for us. Yeah, um, you know, uh, is, 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 are they gonna have lots for sale there? I don't know. Uh, you know it depends on if they go with verandas or um, designer homes. We'll have a, probably a better idea on that in the next week or two as they continue to put up the, the walls. If they put up walls for veranda homes, then I'm going to say, no, there's no, no uh, custom lots there. But if they continue, then, um, you know, with, without the walls, then yeah, there's a good possibility they'll have um, the, uh, the custom home lots. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Let's see. Ask a teacher says, Don, thank you for all you do. Our dogs enjoy his our dog enjoys his invisible fence <clears throat> here in the north. If we put an invisible fence in our yard or in our house in Moultrie, would we have to go through ARC review, architectural review? Um, yes, but you would. I mean, because it's on the exterior of the home. Uh, but an invisible fence is really not a big deal. Uh, I've never heard of one being disapproved. Um, they, they, you know, it's just a, you know, it's just a, a formality at that point because it doesn't inf impact um, the the cosmetics of the home. Um, let's see. You know, I, I, <laughs> I forgot to switch cameras when I was talking about the pup cam. Yeah, let me see. Let me turn the camera around just a little bit see if we can see whoops a very pregnant lily there she is right there just snoozing on the floor um so yeah the invisible fence is not a big deal i know quite a few people that have them um uh let's see victoria says uh i love our dogs we have mastiffs wow that's a big dog that's a lot of dog a mastiff um <coughs> let's see uh, sorry, I got the wrong glasses on. 
Um, uh, I'm not going to try and destroy your name. I'm really bad at pronunciation on words I don't know. Uh, have you heard any update about the dangerous cart crossing at Megason south of Citrus Grove Gate? Uh, some said there were surveyors uh, there this week, so hoping it's going going to get addressed. I haven't heard anything. Uh, I'm not in the loop on that particular uh, subject. Uh, if it was a county issue, then I would uh, probably know something, but this is an issue for the CDD and the, the project-wide advisory committee and the developer to resolve. Uh, I think the answer is pretty simple. Uh, just move the cart path. Um, uh, just move the cart path up 20, 25, 30 feet beyond the gate uh, on the same side that it's on right now. You get a safe harbor. Uh, the cars will be moving slow. They're not going to have the race condition. It'll be just like all the other gates. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, any thoughts on well point when <laughs> we, Marcus, we just talked about this. Uh, any thoughts on... <laughs> When uh, this well point might be available. No, uh, no idea. It's probably going to be summertime though, easily. Uh, Mushki says Lily is pregnant. Yes, Lily is very pregnant. She should do in about two weeks. Um, you know, we uh, we're we're very excited. Uh, it's it's a joyous time for us. We enjoy uh, raising the puppies. And we enjoy finding them good homes. Uh, so. Um, there you go. Uh, Catherine here says, Hi everyone, Don. We were wondering why you mentioned the homes when built at Hacienda will go quickly. Thanks, enjoy your latest update. Happy 10th anniversary. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been 10 great years living here. Uh, why do I think they're going to go quickly? There are 25 homes. Uh, it's a very well-established area. So um, people are going to be you know, wanting that area. It's it's really close to the town square. It's really close to the hospital. It's close to a lot of the shopping. So, you know, it 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 really meets all the wickets that a lot of people want. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's. I think they're definitely going to go very, very quickly. Uh, uh, let's see. Jerry says, wonder... Uh, oh, I, I guess you're meaning how many puppies? Well, last litter she had 11. Uh, seven survived. We had one that was stillborn, uh, one that she accidentally laid on at about three days old, and uh, it didn't make it, and two were born late. Uh, that one is, um, the two being born late, one was born like 16 hours after the rest of the litter was born, and then another was born um, about 12 hours after that. Uh, so this week we're taking her down, getting her x-rayed, so we can do a puppy count. Um, and uh, uh, a lady that helped us with the delivery last time, uh, she's gonna work with us and, and help us through the delivery this time. Uh, I was kind of a panicky father, I guess, when the first litter was being born. Uh, but anyway, uh, not so panicky now. She was a good mama and Sully was a great dad. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Corvette Kid says, any update on the future commercial lot off Central Parkway between Middleton and Moultrie Creek? Looks like they're putting in topsoil and spreading it out. Uh, will, uh, will they, I assume, will they seed it and leave it an empty uh, till some? Um, so if they don't have anything planned, yes, they will probably seed it to stop the, the sand from and, and the topsoil from blowing around. Uh, one, it preserves the topsoil. Two, it preserves the sanity of the residents that are going to be nearby. Uh, the winds just kind of whip sometimes here in Florida. Um, but uh, I have heard no updates. Uh, all the digging I've done doesn't show anything yet uh, in any plans or any permitting for that area. All I know is it is scheduled to be uh, commercial. Uh, let's see. Coming down, oh, so Marcus says, coming down for lifestyle, how long a cart ride is it from Brownwood to St. Catherine? I uh, really enjoy the live chats. Well, thank you, Marcus. Uh, I enjoy doing them. So how, from Brownwood to St. Catherine, man, it's been a while since I did it in a golf cart. 
Um, you know, if I recall, it was maybe 20 minutes. It's, you know, it, it's a couple of miles, but the golf cart, it, it's, there's not a lot of crossings um, that you have to make. And the few crossings that there are, most of them are tunnels. The only one, in fact, I can, th there's only two that I can think of. Three? Yes, yeah, there's three that I can think of. Over in uh, Richmond and St. John's, where you have to cross uh, where there's traffic. The rest is, is all by tunnels. So uh, it shouldn't be, uh, actually there's four. There's four because there's two in St. John's. Uh, but it's, it's not that difficult of a drive. Um, you know, obviously you're trying to get from Brownwood to probably uh, Sawgrass Grove, which is a great place, uh, especially now that they've fixed the parking problems. But we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, but Sawgrass is, is great. It's, it's a nice uh, area for entertainment. The fact that it's covered makes it phenomenal. In the Village's latest update on Eastport that they put out yesterday or day before, uh, they were saying that uh, the two sides of the entertainment area are going to be covered. So that's going to be a nice addition. There's a lot of good things happening in Eastport. I think they've learned a lot over the years, and they're really putting them all to play. Uh, the fact that the, uh, the road is going to be able to be closed off every night easily because there's no parking on the waterfront road uh, makes that all open area for people to set up chairs and things like that. It's really going to be uh, exciting to see that come to life. Uh, let's see. Uh, Victoria says... Are lots for purchase only for designer and premier homes, or can you purchase a lot and build a veranda? You cannot. Um, the designer and premier homes are the only ones that you can build. However, they have started doing, there's an area in uh, Shady Brook that are actually um, cottage homes, and you, do a, you can do a custom build there. Basically, uh, you get to pick out the, the floor plan and um, the finishes and things like that but the actual um, you're not allowed to change any of the structure of it so you'll be able to pick it out and those have I think the highest lot premium I saw was $8,000 and most of the interior lots in that section uh, had a zero lot premium you know that doesn't mean the lots free it just means that there's no premium over the standard lot price that's built into the price of the home uh, oh, Mark asks, what, what's the major difference between a premier and a designer home? The floor plans seem like there are minimal, minimal differences. So uh, the, design, or the premier homes uh, generally have 10-foot ceilings, 8-foot doors instead of 8-foot uh, ceilings and 7-foot doors. Um, that's one thing. Uh, the rooms tend to be a little bit bigger if they're the same floor plan and uh, there's a lot more upgraded finishes uh, that are standard in the premier home there are some uh, homes still available some floor plans that are still available like the Grand View um, uh, um, it's it's definitely a premier home it's well over 3,000 square feet uh, there's some really large floor plans, premier homes, uh, but you can also get some of the designer homes in a premier floor plan. So there, there's, there's some upgrades in them. That's the big thing. Uh, High-end finishes. Yep, uh, Jerry just basically mirrored what I said. Um, so, whew, man, coffee time. I actually should be drinking water because I was out um, just before the last video premiered cutting the grass. Something that I absolutely deplore. I, I hate doing yard work. I have since I was a kid. Um, you know, what I knew about grass as a teenager, well, we can't talk about that. That wasn't legal back then. Uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, wrong type of grass. Um, but, you know, we were all teenagers at one time. Uh, Ask a teacher says, uh, did you buy a place in Moultrie yet? No, not yet. Um, haven't found what we liked yet. Uh, there were some that came out last, this last week um, that uh, they were veranda homes. Uh, 
They were they had view most of them were view sites. Um, the view the the homes we liked, we didn't like the view because they were overlooking basically uh, the I think it was the seventh or eighth hole of uh, uh, Shallow Creek, and then just beyond that was Bar Boulevard. I don't want to look at the road, um, you know. But uh, haven't found what we wanted yet. Um, but we are still looking. We've narrowed it down to a couple of uh, veranda home floor plans, the, the Saginaw and the Hillsdale, and a Winslow C uh, courtyard villa. So we might do a, um, uh, uh, what you call it, um, the, uh, the, a, a courtyard villa. The, Win the Winslow C is a very nice floor plan. Our next door neighbors have one. Uh, it's at a got a different name. Ten years ago, they had a different name for it. I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, but anyway. Uh, my wife just told me it's called a Wyndham on the older floor plans. Uh, the, the only thing I really don't like about the new uh, courtyard villas is their straight load in. Where I live, everything is, um, is at an angle on the the courtyard villas. Now some people don't like it because it makes the parking difficult, but in the new neighborhoods it feels like you're in a tunnel every time you go to your front door. It, it's very, uh, it's not very inviting in my opinion. Um, the the angled ones that are at like a 20 degree angle, you know, you can see more of your neighbors and it, it, it's more inviting. Just personal preference. But the floor plans are getting better. Uh, the Wyndham had the um, laundry room out in the garage. Now it's inside the house. So, yeah. And the Wyndham C is about 2,000 square feet. So that's even bigger than our current house. We have a stretched Arlington. And we are uh, 1850, something like that. Yeah, we're pretty big for a, rent, for a, a courtyard villa home. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Mark asks, worth the difference? I can't tell you that. If it's worth the difference for Premier, it's, it's entirely up to you. Uh, depends on what you value. Um, Jerry says, uh, Premier Warbler is a definite yes. Okay. Avalon, yes, that's another one of the um, uh, Premier Home floor plans. And Victoria says, need a veranda uh, with fence for the Mastiffs. <laughs> I get it. I do get it. Uh, you see my baby girl laying there. She's just snoozing away. She does a lot of that lately. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, for us, the dogs are really what's important. Um, so Terry says, um, Hi, Don. What is the open area at St. John's, west of Warm Springs, and south of Megason, commercial or residential? Uh, commercial. Uh, the, all three corners there uh, are, um, are definitely commercial properties. Uh, they're building a church on, uh, over there also. Um, but yeah, the corners are all commercial. Uh, right now I know that there's a church on one side of the road and on the other side, the south side of Warm Springs, is that the south side? Yeah, I think it's south side of Warm Springs. They're putting in a, a, a um, co not a convalescent home. Um, it's a hospital, uh, but it's, it's not a hospital. It's, it's a, ah, uh, the words escape me. Anyway, uh, it's a medical facility. Um, uh, let's see, Jerry says, Mark, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. I fell in love with the Warbler, but I'm sure the models will be different uh, when I'm ready to move. Okay, yep. <laughs> uh, Janet Black says, love the videos. Thank you for everything you do. Will Mrs. Dawn ever make an appearance? Probably not. She doesn't like to be on camera. She doesn't like her picture taken. She doesn't like to be recorded. Personally, I don't blame her. I, I don't like it e either. But it's become just a necessity, if you will, uh, as you know, for, for doing what I do with these videos and, and sharing information with people. Um, but I, I get over it. I've gotten over it. Uh, a couple of years as an instructor in the Navy definitely helped make that, got me over the stage fright. Uh, you know, when I was a teenager in school, uh, three most terrifying words a teacher ever said to me was oral book report. 
I would break out in sweat. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, Marcus says, uh, Don, I remember your first you first raised the issue about park about the parking problems at um, Sawgrass. Uh, yeah, it wasn't just me that raised the issue. You know, it was people parking on the grass. Um, they put in some landscaping, uh, and it, it took a while to put it in. Uh, but you know, it, it stopped trashing the um, the the grass. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a um, it wasn't designed for that. And honestly, yeah, you know, it was just pure laziness that people were there. Uh, Anita says. Uh, Warm Springs Hospital equals rehab. Yes, that's it. I, I knew I'd come, somebody would come up with the right word. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, uh, Brooklyn Michael says, Hi, Don. Love the podcast. Saw a few trucks at the CVS site in Magnolia. Is there any update on this construction? You know, I went by there the other day, and I did not see any work going on. But, you know, it, it changes from day to day. I've been stuck in my office uh, trying to get 139 out for the last two days. Uh, yesterday I got some golf in, went to breakfast with my neighbors, had a good time, but uh, then I spent the rest of my day and most of the evening uh, editing the video trying to get it out. No, actually not editing the video, the soundtrack. The, the voiceover is the hardest part. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, uh, Nathan, hey Nate, good to hear, good to see you. All right. Um, so what else? I that's all I got on my list for questions. Nobody else got any questions. Now there's there's so much going on here in the village. It's uh, it it is hard to keep track. It's hard to stay on top of everything. Um, it's become harder to find information, uh, but you know, we do what we can. Uh, I picked up a, a new sponsor um, recently, uh, Country Village Golf Carts, and, or Country Village Power Equipment and Golf Cars. So they're down in Webster, they're right across the street from uh, the Webster Flea Market. I anyway, remember what it was. Um, uh, they they offer a six-year warranty, which is crazy. Uh, uh, I mean, it's crazy, crazy good uh, that they do that. Um, they they actually sell parts to the end user. So if you want to change the belt in your golf cart yourself, um, you you can go someplace locally now and get the parts you need. Uh, and they can also uh, bring your cart in for service, or you know, if you need an oil change, they can do it at your house. Uh, great group of people. Uh, they sponsored um, a golf cart uh, raffle at the spring thing this year and at last year's spring thing. Uh, last year somebody down in uh, Polk City I believe it was won it. This year it was somebody here in the villages that won the golf cart. Alright, what else we got? Um, huh. Man. Got to keep me going with the coffee. What time is it? It's only 4, oh, 4.06. Wow. Things keep going. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people have complained about the uh, advertisements in my videos. Um, I, I went and I, I took me a long time to, to finally move with the idea um, of putting in ads. Uh, it was finally uh, talking with Joey at 24 Hour Cart Club. He was my my first sponsor. Um, you know, I st you know I still uh, keep in touch with Joey. Uh, he, the the ads don't run very often now, but you know when he when he reaches out, I, I run his ad. Um, but uh, the cost for doing these videos is you can't imagine. You know, I mean, in a week's time, just in driving around, uh, looking at the different sites. You gotta remember, I'm going from the far north end to the far south end of the villages, and I'll make that trip three or four times, uh, looking around, doing research, uh, trying to figure out what to shoot next. And, um, you know, uh, 
you know, so I, I go through a ton of gas every week. Um, obviously, the equipment is not cheap. Uh, I have upgraded my equipment in this last year. Uh, I've, I've upgraded to an Apple computer, uh, a Mac Studio uh, that was unbelievably expensive. Uh, and I'm still not fully into using it as I planned on for editing video. When I do edit video with it, though, it is extremely fast, so it's time savings. Um, you know, and then, of course, the, the, the drone aircraft, uh, they don't get any cheaper. The one I'm using now, uh, it's uh, their, their top-of-the-line consumer drone by DJI. It's called a Mavic 3 Pro Cine. Uh, the Cine means it does Hollywood-grade 4K video. Uh, it creates a massive amount of data, and honestly, the only thing that can handle it is a Mac Studio. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> we got some more comments here. Um, uh, Catherine Heller says, construction in TV is almost impossible to explain to anyone. Your videos are outstanding. Really appreciate your investment and effort. Uh, well, thank you. Appreciate it. I, I, try to ju I just try and get, as I said at the beginning of, of 139, just get good factual information out. You know, when I, when I started doing this, there were so many people on YouTube and Facebook putting out pure nonsense. And they had no idea what they were talking about. And I was sitting there going, that's not what's, what's been filed. Anyway, uh, so just try and get facts out to you. You can make your own decisions. Some people have decided watching my videos that, uh, you know, hey, the villages isn't for them. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad they didn't make a bad decision. They made the right decision for them, uh, you know, and many people have made the decision to move here because of my videos. Good for them. I, I don't try and influence people one way or the other. I do love it here. Uh, I, I don't deny that. Uh, to me, it's been great. I, I have very few complaints. Um, let's see. James Dreyer says, I, knew, I know you and I share uh, our opinion on pitch and putt. Uh, my thought is that if they were to put cart paths on them, they would be uh, they would be the hardest tee times to get. Well, why don't they do that? Uh, cart paths take space, is the big thing. Uh, they're all uh, short yardage courses. Uh, they try and squeeze 18 holes, and they put 18 holes in in the space that they would normally put a nine hole executive course. Uh, it's just, I mean, to me. It's not for me, the pitch and putt. Um, well, I guess, I guess I, I'm a little... Uh, golf probably isn't my game. Uh, I just, I'm not a great golfer. I enjoy it, though. I go out for the laughs. I go out for, I, I always walk away with a smile and having a good time with my friends. Um, uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, why they don't put golf cart paths in? It's because they would take up a lot of extra space on the courses, making room for the cart path, and it's they, they just you know it wouldn't make the pitch and putt work. Um, uh, sorry, I'm uh, let's see. Mark Ryan says hi, Don. Sorry, I'm late. Watching the IA women play. Okay, I don't know what IA women are. Let's see. Hi, Don. Last week, uh, this is from Lisa. She she says hi, Don. Last week you mentioned a possible third town center. What location and how far from Eastport? Um, so yeah, uh, I saw, I found online a picture of a map. Uh, this was a couple of months ago uh, that showed um, it was fuzzy, but there was enough detail to be made out that you could make out the commercial areas. And yeah, it's about, uh, I want to say three miles, three or four miles south of uh, Eastport will be another town square, but that's probably 10 or 15 years out. They got a lot of area that they're going to focus on and build. Uh, you know, the, ta the town squares are, are generally spaced, uh, you know, 10, 12 years apart. Uh, so, yeah, Eastport's going to open probably in a year, figure 12 years from now. So we're talking 13 years before that ever happens. But uh, it's a long way. Um, Let's see, William Rizzo says, do you need a smoke and carbon dioxide detector if you don't have natural gas in your house? Yes, 
Absolutely you do. Um, it's a safety issue. The houses all are all built with uh, combination smoke and carbon dioxide detectors. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, keep them up to date. Replace them every seven years. They have a limited lifespan. Um, so uh, yes, you want to. You definitely want to have it in our in our house and geez, every house I've ever been in in the villages. Every room has a smoke detector. Uh, our hallway has a smoke detector. Um, it it saves lives. Um, please, yes, use them. Um, uh, let's see. Ah, yes. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, please hit the like button. And if you don't like it, hit the dislike button twice. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, IA equals Iowa. Oh, okay. All right. Ah, now I get it, Mark. Iowa women's basketball. Got it. All right. Um, let's see. James Dreyer says, I have golf with you. You have fun. You taught me senior par. Yeah. Everybody knows what a senior par is, right? You know, everybody gets a senior citizen discount. Senior par is one over, right? Everybody else can golf par. I, I hit senior par. Yesterday's round was, uh, we'll call it super senior par. I really did poorly. Uh, we played over at uh, Southern Star. I liked the course. The course was in fabulous shape. The greens were in, in great shape. Yeah, a little rough spot here and there, but overall it was it was a it was a great great round of golf. Uh, other than the ball not going in the right spot. Um, uh, all right, what does this say? I just uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Don. Our house is 10 years old this year. I just ordered them from Amazon. Okay, William, I'm not sure what you ordered. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, James says, uh, no, you told me. I've seen, I've seen your par putt, and you're still up. Okay. All right. Oh, man. Wow, we're just cooking right along. We've been on this about 45 minutes. And my Lily is still sitting there, just laying quietly. Let's see if she'll get up for a treat. Whoops, yep. There you go, sweetie pie. Yeah. She likes her treats. All right. <laughs> oh, man. So, what else is going on here? Um... Oh yeah, there's uh, an event coming up. What's it called? I got the flyer here someplace. Um, cars, cigars, uh, I don't remember the exact thing, but it's on May 18th. There's another fundraiser. Um, the uh, it, It's in my uh, latest video that I uh, put out. Uh, I'm one of their sponsors. Uh, well, I am. My company is one of the sponsors for it. And, um, you know, uh, it's 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 going to going to raise money to buy a car for veterans, uh, so that's a good thing. <sighs> Let's see. Mark Ryan says, "I know you don't like to mix politics and this channel. Could you could you uh, online the new Sumter County Public Safety Initiative for citizens for a citizens protect perspective?" And uh, Mark, can you help me out here? What new Sumter County Public Safety Initiative are we talking about? Um, as I don't, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Um, the smoke detector, CO detectors. Uh, William says the smoke detector, carbon dioxide detector. Still drawing a blank. Yeah, I really don't like mixing uh, the politics with this channel. Um, yes, I am in. <laughs> I'm in politics. I'm. I need my head examined, and I'm running for re-election. But um, yeah, uh, this this channel is about uh, getting good information out to people uh, about the villages who are interested in buying here, or 
uh, Sumter County. Sumter County is a wonderful county. Uh, we moved here, and one of the things I remember when we moved and before we moved here, uh, we had we had lived in Haines City, which is an hour south of here. Uh, we had lived there for seven years. I had made many motorcycle trips up here, and I always liked it in uh, Sumter County. Uh, some of the other counties, some of the other areas, I'll just say that. Uh, I, I, you didn't really feel welcome. It wasn't very, uh, wasn't a very warm and welcoming place. But I mean, you know, I came through Bushnell a few times. I came through um, Wildwood, um, you know, and stopped there for lunch. Great people. I stopped in Lake Pan once. Great people there. Uh, felt very warm and uh, welcoming. Uh, didn't feel like an outsider. You know, and then to find out that, hey, the Villages is also in the same county. Oh, that was a huge plus. Really liked it that way. Um, you know, people, people move to different places for different reasons. Uh, for Debbie and I, it was, you know, the feeling of community. Where we lived in Haines City before, I was president of my HOA for, um, ah, jeepers, six years out of the seven that I lived there. I know three of my neighbors by name, and that was it. Uh, and we were a very small community. We only had 31 homes. Uh, but people would go home. They'd come home from work, go in their house, and you never see them again. Uh, and uh, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a, an, an inviting and welcoming place. Uh, we'd come here to the villages. It always seemed right. But when we did our lifestyle preview, um, Ten and a half years ago, uh, ten years ago, well, ten and a half years ago, September. Um, it was amazing. We had a great time. People were very welcoming when we went to the town square. Uh, we got lost. Uh, I, you know, now I know where we were at. We were on the north or the south side of 466A. There's a long uh, cart path that goes along that goes east-west on 466A. And uh, we didn't know where we were at, didn't know where we were going, had a map out. Some guy pulled over, said, hey, you look lost. We said, yeah. He says, where are you trying to go? And uh, we told him Lake Sumter Landing. He said, uh, I could give you directions, but why don't you just follow me? And he basically took us all, he took us all the way up to Lake Sumter Landing. And uh, I don't know where he lived, but obviously uh, he'd passed his house. And uh, he, after he, he dropped us off, we waved, and he turned around and went back home. Uh, so that was, that was a really nice uh, feeling, a great thing to, to feel welcome like that. Uh, you know, I, I grew up on an Air Force base, and then I spent 20 years on Navy bases. And, you know, on the military, in the military community, um, everybody looks out for each other. You know, I had a... At, at the last place I was stationed in Kings Bay, Georgia, we lived in Navy housing. Our next door neighbor was on a missile boat, just like I was, different ship, uh, and our two schedules rarely, they didn't match up. We got to see each other about two weeks every six months. Uh, the rest of the time, you know, if something went ha would happen at the house and he, my wife needed help, she would uh, go next door and he would help out and vice versa. When uh, you know he was out at sea, I was home, and uh, she would come over and ask for help for different things, you know, maybe the car problems, what have you. So everybody took care of each other, and that's just the, the community we were used to. Um, anyway, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Sandy McAllister says, "Hi, Don. What's the best way to get notified as soon as the new home lots are?" active on the market. Is it your VL, uh, VLS sales associate? Yes, it is. They are the ones who are going to get the information first. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a new home, that, that's the only way to do it. Um, but yes, they get the information first. They normally get it like the night before uh, homes get listed. Uh, so they can, you know, help you make that final decision before you uh, throw your name in the hat for the lottery and hope you get what you, you get the house you're looking for. It's very competitive these days, uh, people trying to get homes. Whew. Okay. Wow. 
I just saw the cup on, on the, the camera because it's so big. It just completely filled the, the camera. Uh, 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 let's see. Michael says, uh, Don, I need some Four Rivers. I've heard it's good. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying it. Uh, I love good barbecue. Uh, I will tell you, though, I am very biased in my barbecue after I retired from the Navy. We moved to Memphis, and uh, it, Memphis is, in my opinion, got the best barbecue in the world. Uh, I know there's people in the Carolinas and Texas and all that will argue, okay, great, I like pig, I like uh, Memphis-style barbecue. Uh, I got spoiled there in every May. There's a thing called Memf Memphis in May, and it's a big um, gathering or, or a big competition for barbecue. And, you know, all you smell all over the city of Memphis is the smoke and the, the pork, and uh, it's just such a wonderful week during Memphis in May. Um, I, got, uh, I got spoiled on what's called dry rub ribs. Instead of the wet barbecue sauce, they use a dry seasoning. Uh, that's the only way I make ribs now on the grill is to, with dry rub. Um, but, uh, yep, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to Four Rivers. Uh, you know, if they got a, a good shredded pork sandwich, man, I'm in. I am in like you would not believe. In Memphis, there was a chain of barbecue restaurants called Topps Barbecue. Um, and uh, there were more Topps Barbecues than there were McDonald's in the city of Memphis. Uh, so uh, we ate a lot of barbecue. Uh, the first time I had a barbecue sandwich for breakfast, I was scratching my head like, why would I do this? Uh, after the first sandwich, I, I never regret it. After that Saturday morning ride on a motorcycle, first stop was Topps Barbecue, get a sandwich. They were open in the morning for breakfast because they smoked their meat all night long. They were, there was somebody there 24-7 smoking the meat, so it was always fresh and, ah, uh, so good. Anyway, uh, now I'm getting hungry. <clears throat> and I got meatloaf for dinner. It's not barbecue, but uh, it, I'll, I'll still, I'll, I'm not settling. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, any more questions? Uh, okay, so James Mortensen says, if you're going to buy a good starter drone uh, that is simple to use, but not on the cheap side, what would you buy? That's easy. I would buy a DJI Mini 4 Pro. Uh, it's a great starter drone. It's a great intermediate drone. Uh, if you watched my last video, can you tell which shots were done with my Mini 4 Pro and which shots were done with my uh, Mavic 3 Pro? I can't hardly tell. I know what the differences are because I did the editing. But beyond that, you can't tell the difference. Phenomenal little aircraft. It's right at 250 grams, half a pound. Um, flies like a dream. Uh, the downside to it is its small size. Uh, so you can only see it about a thousand feet. Um, and you have to maintain line of sight on your aircraft. But uh, you're not going to crash it. It's got collision avoidance. Uh, it's got a host of advanced features. It does return to home. Batteries get low. It'll come home and land. Uh, you drop your, your remote in the water. Ten seconds later, the drone turns around, comes home, and lands right where it started from. It's a great starter drone. It's a great intermediate drone. Uh, many of the people in the drone club are flying the Mini 4 Pro. It's been out since, I want to say, September. Uh, and it just really has, you know, uh, changed things a lot in the drone world. To have that much power, that much technology in a small aircraft and still be, you know, uh, I think it's. I think the base price is about seven hundred, seven hundred and fifty dollars for it. Uh, it's worth getting what's called the Fly More package. Uh, the Fly More package uh, includes the drone. Uh, you want the remote with the display, and you want. Um, uh, it uh, it also comes with a carry bag, three batteries, a bulk charger, so you can charge all three batteries at once. Extra propellers, definitely the best value. I would show you mine, but it's out in the truck. Okay, so we are coming up on 4.30, so we've been online for about an hour now, 
Anybody else got any questions? If not, we're going to go ahead and end this. And uh, I can smell the meatloaf already in the oven. So uh, I'm going to go bug my wife and see if uh, there's any way we can speed dinner up. Because I worked up an appetite cutting the grass. Nobody else got any questions? Come on, folks. Okay. Um, so, as many of you saw, uh, my Lily is pregnant again. Uh, so, just the pups will be for sale once they uh, are, you know, old enough. Uh, I will put up a, cam a camera so we can live stream them every now and then. Um, the uh, the pups, uh, you know, I'm <sighs> to me, it's a labor of love. I love my dogs uh, dearly. Uh, I enjoyed raising the puppies and finding them good homes. Uh, the current, the the last litter, um, the uh, the seven pups went home. Uh, one lives in Orlando. Four live here in the villages. One lives right outside the villages uh, with a family with uh, a small farm, some horses, and three little boys. And uh, my vet bought uh, the one male and uh, he's he's a spitting image of his dad uh, but I keep in touch with all of them I keep track of all of them and they just like this the current litter uh, I'll go home with the understanding that the dog is never ever to go to a shelter or a rescue if for whatever reason the the new owner can't take care of the dog uh, can't provide adequate care for it uh, there to come back to me I will take care of the dog. I will either keep it myself, find it a new home, but it is never ever to, to go. Yeah, if you can't care for it, I will care for it. Um, you know, and you know, we're going to cover our cost. And you know, already we've decided that 50% of the sale price is going to go to uh, animal rescue charities. Um, if we have our costs are low. Any extras that we make will go to the animal rescue charities. Also, if it's less than, uh, you know, if, if our expenses are high, I'm going to eat the difference and still at least half of the cost of the, the puppy will go to animal rescues. Uh, last time we supported Joshua's house in Lakanto. Uh, they are a golden retriever rescue and we also supported uh, Midfo Mid Florida Golden Retriever Rescue, uh, both worthy charities. Our first golden was a rescue, and uh, you know I, I miss Bo to this day. He was he was a great dog. <clears throat> he really changed my life. Um, but I recognize also that uh, you know not a rescue isn't for everybody. A animal shelter dog isn't for everybody. Uh, they come with their own sets of uh, issues sometimes uh, and some people want a puppy uh, so being a responsible breeder is is very important to me uh, this will be Lily's uh, final litter we're not gonna let her have any more she's four years old that's old enough uh, she she was a great mama and Sully was a great dad and uh, um, wouldn't trade the experience for the world um, Let's see, what else do we got here? A couple of last minute ones. Uh, Jerry says, uh, see you next week. Great, all right, see you. Uh, Terry says, appreciate all your work. Uh, Ken says, keep up the good work. Thanks everybody. Um, John says, uh, coming for a lifestyle preview next week. Looking forward to trying Zanzibar chocolate. Uh, Darlin's is in Sawgrass Market. Yes, it is, and it is awesome. And. Uh, Take with you also a couple of their cookies that they make. <laughs> they have some great cookies there. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, thank you, Nate. You have a good weekend also. Uh, let's call it a day. Thanks, everybody. Uh, look forward to this for, uh, we'll do this again next Sunday at 3 o'clock. Take care.